Hello. Good evening. My name is Timothy Payne Jr. and I am reading King Henry IV, Part 1. I've been reading a few, uh, a scene or so an evening, and we're up to Act 3, Scene 3. Without further ado. Scene 3. East Cheap, the Boar's Head Tavern. Enter Falstaff and Bardolph. Falstaff. Bardolph, am I not fallen away vilely since last action? Do I not bait? Do I not dwindle? Why, my skin hangs about me like an old lady's loose gown. I am withered like an apple, John. Well, I'll repent, and that suddenly, while I am in some liking, I shall be out of heart shortly, and that I shall have no strength to repent, and... I have not forgotten what the inside of a church is made of. I am a peppercorn, a brewer's horse, the inside of a church. Company, a villainous company, hath been the spoil of me. Bardolf. Sir John, you are so fretful, you cannot live long. Falstaff. Why, there is it, there is it. Come sing me a body song, make me merry. I was as virtuously given as a gentleman need to be, virtuous enough, swore little, diced not above seven times a week, went to a body house once in a quarter of an hour, paid money that I borrowed three or four times, lived well and in good compass, and now I live out of all order, out of all compass, Bardolf. Why, you are so fat, Sir John, that you must needs be out of all compass, out of all reasonable compass, Sir John, Foster. Do thou amend thy face, and I'll amend my life. Thou art our admiral, thou bearest the lantern in the poop, but tis in the nose of thee, thou art the knight of the burning lamp. Bardolf. Why, Sir John, my face does you no harm. Falstaff. No, I'll be sworn, I make as good use of it as many a man doth of a death's head or a memento mori. I never see thy face, but I think upon hellfire, and die that lived in purple. For there he is in his robes, burning, burning. If thou wert any way given to virtue, I would swear by thy face. My oath should be, by this fire, that's God's angel. But thou art altogether given over, and wert indeed, but for the light in thy face, the sun of utter darkness. When thou rannest up Gadshill in the night to catch my horse, if I did not think thou hadst been an ignis fatuous or a ball of wildfire, there is no purchase in money. Oh, thou art a perpetual triumph, an everlasting bonfire light. Thou hast saved me a thousand marks in links and torches, walking with thee in the night betwixt tavern and tavern. But the sack that thou hast drunk me would have bought me lights as good cheap as the dearest chandlers in Europe. I have maintained that salamander of yours with Thiam any time this two and thirty years. God reward me for it. Bardolf. Splud, I would my face were in your belly. Falstaff. God a mercy. So should I be sure to be heartburned. Enter hostess. How now, Dame Pot of the Hen? Have you inquired yet who picked my pocket? Hostess. Why, Sir John, what do you think, Sir John? Do you think I keep thieves in my house? I have searched, I have inquired, so is my husband, man by man, boy by boy, servant by servant. The tithe of a hair was never lost in my house before. Falstaff. Ye lie, hostess. Bardolph was shaved and lost many a hair, and I'll be sworn my pocket was picked. Go to, you are a woman. Go. Hostess. Who I? No. I defy thee, God's light. I was never called so in mine own house before. Forsyth. Go to. I know you well enough. Hostess. No, Sir John, you do not know me, Sir John. I know you, Sir John. You owe me money, Sir John, and now you pick a quarrel to begot me of it. I bought you a dozen shirts to your back. Forsyth. Dowlers, filthy dowlers. I have given them away to baker's wives, and they have made bolters of them. Hostess. Now, as I am a true woman, Holland of eight shillings and L, you owe money here besides, Sir John, for your diet and buy drinkings, and money lent you four and twenty pound. Falstaff. He had his part of it, let him pay. Hostess. He? Alas, he is poor, he hath nothing. Falstaff. How, poor? Look upon his face. What call you rich? Let them coin his nose. Let them coin his cheeks. I'll not pay a denier. What, will you make a yonker of me? Shall I not make mine case and mine in, but I shall have my pocket picked? I have lost a seal ring at my grandfather's worth forty mark. Hostess. Oh, Jesu, I have heard the prince tell him I know not how off. That ring was copper. Falstaff. How? The prince is a jack, a sneak up. Splut, and he were here, I would cudgel him like a dog if he would say so. Enter Prince Henry and Peto marching, and Falstaff meets them playing on his truncheon like a like a life. How now, lad? Is the wind in the door, in faith? 
Must we all march? Bardolph. Yea, two and two, Newgate fashion. Hostess. My lord, I pray you, hear me. Henry. What sayest thou, mistress, quickly? How doth thy husband? I love him well. He is an honest man. Hostess. Good my lord, hear me. Foster. Prithee, let her alone and list to me. Henry. What sayest thou, Jack? Foster. The other night I fell asleep here behind the heiress and had my pocket picked. This house is turned bawdy house. They pick pockets. Henry. What didst thou lose, Jack? Foster. Wilt thou believe me, Hob? Three or four bonds of forty pound apiece and a seal ring of my grandfather's. Henry. A trifle. Some eight penny matter. Hostess. So I told him, my lord, and I said I heard your grace say so, and my lord, he speaks most vilely of you, like a foul-mouthed man as he is, and said he would cudgel you. Henry. What? He did not. Hostess. There's neither faith, truth, nor womanhood in me else. Fawcett. There's no more faith in thee than a stewed prune, no, no more truth in thee than a drawn fox, and for womanhood, Maid Marian may be the deputy's wife of the ward to thee. Go, you thing, go! Hostess. Say, what thing? Uh, what thing? Fawcett. What thing? Why, a thing to thank God on. Hostess. I am no thing to thank God on. I would thou shouldst know it. I am an honest man's wife, and setting thy knighthood aside, thou art a knave to call me so. Fawcett. Setting thy womanhood aside, thou art a beast to say so otherwise. Hostess. Say, what beast thou knave, thou? Fawcett. What beast? Why, an otter. Henry. An otter, Sir John. Why an otter? Fawcett. Why, she's neither fish nor flesh. A man knows not where to have her. Hostess. Thou art an unjust man in saying so. Thou or any man knows where to have me, thou knave, thou? Prince Henry, thou sayest true, hostess, and he slanders thee most grossly. Hostess, so he doth you, my lord, and said this other day, you ought him a thousand pound. Henry, sirrah, do I owe you a thousand pound? Falstaff, a thousand pound, ha, a million. Thy love is worth a million. Thou owest me thy love. Hostess, nay, my lord, he called you Jack, and said he would cudgel you. Falstaff, did I, Bardolph? Bardolph, indeed, uh, Sir John, you said so. Falstaff, yea, if he said my ring was copper. Henry, I say, tis copper. Darest thou be as good as thy word now? Falstaff, why, how thou knowest, as thou art but man, I dare, but as thou art prince, I fear thee as I fear the roaring of a lion's whelp. Henry, and why not as the lion? Falstaff, the king is to be feared as the lion. Dost thou think I'll fear thee as I fear thy father? Nay, and I do, I pray God my go to break. Henry, Oh, if it should, how should thy guts fall about thy knees? But, sirrah, there's no room for faith, truth, nor honesty in this bosom of mine. It is all filled up with guts and midriff. Charge an honest woman with picking thy pocket. Why, thou whoreson, and impudent, embossed and rascal. If there were anything in thy pocket but tavern reckonings, memorandums of body houses, and one poor penny worth of sugar candy to make thee long-winded, if thy pocket were enriched with any other injuries but these, I am a villain, and yet you will stand to it. You will not pick up a wrong. Art thou not ashamed? Falstaff. Dost thou hear, Hal? Thou knowest in the state of innocency Adam fell, and what should poor Jack Falstaff do in the days of villainy? Thou seest I have more flesh than another man, and therefore more frailty. You confess then. You picked my pocket. Henry. It appears so by the story. Falstaff. Hostess, I forgive thee. Go. Make ready breakfast, love thy husband, look to thy servants, cherish thy guest. Thou shalt find me tractable to any honest reason. Thou seest I am pacified still. Nay, prithee, be gone. Exit hostess. Now how? To the news at court, for the robbery, lad, how is that answered? Henry. Oh, my sweet beef, I must still be good angel to thee. The money is paid back again. Faustin. Oh, I do not li like that paying back, tis a double labor. Henry, I am good friends with my father and may do anything. Falstaff, rob me the exchequer, the first thing thou doest, and do it with unwashed hands, too. Bardolf, do, my lord. Henry, I have procured thee, Jack, a charge of foot. Falstaff, I would it have been of horse. Where shall I find one that can steal well? Oh, for a fine thief of the age of two and twenty or thereabouts. I am heinously unprovided. Well, God be thanked for these rebels. They offend none but the virtuous. I laud them. I praise them, Henry. Bardolf, Bardolf, my lord, Henry, go bear this letter to the lord of Lancaster, to my brother John, this to my lord of Westmoreland, exit Bardolf. Go, Petto, 
To horse, to horse. For thou and I have thirty miles to ride yet ere dinner time. Exit Peter. Jack, meet me tomorrow in the temple hall at two o'clock in the afternoon. There thou shalt know thy charge, and there receive money and order for their furniture. The land is burning. Percy stands on high, and neither we or they must lower lie. Exit Henry. Falstaff. Rare words. Brave world. Hostess, my breakfast, come. Or I could wish this tavern were my drum. Exit. And scene. So thanks for tuning in. Look forward to more King Henry IV in the following evenings. Have a good night.